Let's start in the book of prophet Isaiah. Gice cha mbere murongo wa 19 kugeza kuri 20. Chapter 1 verse 19 to 20. Haravuga ngo Nimwemera mukumvira muzarya ibyiza zo mu gihugu. Ariko nimwanga mukagoma inkota izabarya kuko akanwa kuwiteka ariko kabivuze. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 says if you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land but if you refuse and rebel you shall be eaten by the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken amen uh, and let's go back a little bit and read in the book of Job uh, 36 verse 11 haravugango Nibayumvira bakayikorera bazamara iminsi yabo baguwe neza bazamara n'imyaka yabo mu byishimo ariko nibatumvira bazarimbuzwa inkota kandi bazafa ari nta bwenge bafite Job 36:11 If they listen and serve him they will complete their days in prosperity and their years in pleasantness. But if they do not listen, they will perish by the sword and die without knowledge. Amen. And will end in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11, verse 8. Haravuga ngo kwizera niko kwatumye Abrahamu Yumvira imana imuhamagariye kujaho yaragiye kuragwa nuko agenda atazi iyo aje Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place that he was to receive an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going Amen 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 Amen. 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 God bless you. Uh, Amen. 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 For sure, something that has to make us joyful, it is the one of God. And again, we thank God for he gave us his word. That it can lead us in this earth. And can continue strengthening us. Amen. Probably if there wasn't the word of God, we wouldn't be like this. But we thank God for he gave us his word. And we love it so much. Praise God. And again, I welcome you in the word of God. We will talk in the time that I also know about, whether short or long. We praise God. We, we are not controlled by the time, but the, word, the spirit of God. And do not listen to the word of God checking the time as well. Or speak about the word of God checking with the time as well. Let us all always be controlled by the spirit. Because the spirit of God is it the one that guides us. When we speak of it in 20 minutes, that's it. But at least get something from it. Amen. We'll talk about the word of God that says listening to the word to God as the key. That is the word of God that we're going to talk about today. Being obedient to God as a key. Hallelujah. Amen. We all know a key. 
nakamara ku rufunguzo turaruza and we know the use of the key as well abantu batuye mu mazumuza kamara ku rufunguzo we live all in houses and you know the use of the key all those who have cars as well know the use of the key muziko ku rufunguzo buri aturarusuzugura ko rakomeye cyane we always sometimes disrespect the key but it is an important tool aho nyine twicaye muri iyi nzu nuko bera rifunguzo this place that we are in is only because of the key if it had been lost we all couldn't be muruva ku ku rufunguzo rufite agaciro mu buzima the key has a huge role in our lives. If one lost the key of their car, they wouldn't get to their home easily. Even when you get home and find it closed, you'll stay behind the door. Which means the key is important in our lives. Amen. So the God put the word on my heart that says listening to the word of God as a key. A key that we have to use. Probably there are many other keys that we can use such that we can open the gates of heaven. But the key that I want us to talk about today is the key of obedience to God. There is a key to prayer that also opens heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. But let us talk about obedience as a key. Obedience is something that we all know as well. And it is something that everyone wants. When you give birth to kids, you pray to God that they can be obedient. I don't know if there is any parent who prays that their kids can be disobedient. Every parent prays that their kids can be obedient. Your, parents, your kids can be respectful. That's what parents are joyful And when a parent has an obedient child, the devil also attacks in and causes the children to be respectful. But there is always that one child who is respectful and obedient. Sometimes you find the parent happy for that one child. It's not because he hates others. But when you have that child that is obedient, is the one that you take care of the most. Hallelujah. Amen. If we are happy that our kids can be obedient to us, God also wants the same. Hallelujah. Amen. God in heaven wants us to be obedient to him. So when the person loses a key of obedience, in you when there is no obedience, it means you have lost the key that opens your, the gate to your blessings. There are good things ahead of you that God has prepared for you. But many of them couldn't reach them because of disobedience. They lost obedience in them. Through that lost that losing it it made them not reach their blessings hallelujah amen hallelujah amen ubundi habaho ibintu bibiri mu buzima there are two things in life habaho umugisha iyo dusoma ijambo ry'Imana there is a blessing when we read the word of god there is a blessing for the people that are obedient to God. And there is a curse for the people that are disobedient to God. In the Bible, we find very many words. When you read in the book of 2 Chronicles, sorry, chapter 11, at verse 26, Moses asked the people. 
He tells them these words. He says, until today I put ahead a blessing and a curse. Ahead of you I place blessings and a curse. Amen. And he said, this blessing shall be given to you only if you're obedient to God. And he says, for this curse as well, you will be cursed if you become disobedient to God. Amen. There are blessings that God has put ahead of us. And there are curses as well. But that blessing has conditions as well. Most of the times, things of God have conditions. God says, if you do this, I'll do this in return. So when you don't do what God has asked you to do, there is when God doesn't do what he promised us. Because there's also something that you feel to do. Yet what, we get, what fails us is less than what God could do. Only because you couldn't be obedient. Amen. And for sure, disobedience is a great sin. Amen. He told them, this blessing shall be given to you only when you are obedient. And for this curse as well shall be unto you when you become disobedient. Hallelujah. Amen. In this book, we have very many history of many kings. When you read in Kings and then you go on in the other books, they will tell you of very many other kings. The word of God tells us that the kingdom of Israel before it split. After the kingdom, the the reign of Solomon. After the reign of Solomon, the kingdom was split into two. Because Solomon had married many wives. So they continue to bring things that are not allowed. So that made the kingdom be split into two. That is huge history for for the kingdom. So 10 tribes went in Samaria. And other two tribes in, with, within the house of Manasseh as well. There was the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. And within those 10 tribes that went to Samaria. They went others to attack the kingdom. The, the king would rule and there was someone else to come after him. The word of God tells us that in Samaria up to 19 kings lay. And in all those kings, none of them obeyed the Lord and did the work of God. And all those other kings that led the ten tribes that had stayed. There, there was also other kings. They were led uh, up to twenty kings. And within twenty kings. From the first king he did not the, Lord, the second as well. The third did not obey the Lord. Till the thirteenth king. And he was a king called Ezekiah. And when they reached Ezekiah, he obeyed the Lord. Amen. The word of God tells us that God added Ezekiah 15 years of life. He was not going to give him more years of life for no reason. Amen. Ezekiah wasn't given more years of life for Ezekiah no reason. Ezekiah was a king who did what others had done. 
After he stepped on the throne, he started fighting against all those idols that his former kings had. All those former kings that were before him. And they did that even in the house of God. So Ezekiah started fighting that battle. Fighting against all those taboos of their That's when he brought Levites in the house of God. That's when he started fighting all those idols in the house of God. That's when he started destroying the idols in the house of God. That's when he started fighting against all those That's when he started fighting against the snake that Amos had constructed The time when they were being attacked and God asked, him to construct the snake the the then he said everyone who looks at the snake shall be healed so they did not leave that snake over there they also took it and they started worshipping the snake instead of God now that Ezekiah had become obedient to God he understood that God was the stronger one now he started removing all these rituals amen you understand that Ezekiah had become obedient different from his ancestors all those kings that stayed in Jerusalem up to 20 of them only this king Ezekiah and the other king called Josiah you'll see him in 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 Second Chronicles, that he went to his reign at the age of eight. He also says he's the one that was righteous to God. Only these two kings are the ones that were to God. All the others you listen that they were they lived to not serve God. Amen. We're on the word that says being obedient to God as a key. So in all these kings that did not listen to God, there are many of them that God made other nations attack. He made the other tribes attack them and take them. Amen. And in these kings that were disobedient to God, there is a king called Saul that we find in the book of Samuel, chapter 15. God told Samuel to go and put Saul to his reign. In those times, the people of God no, no, were no, by no, now they came to ask for a king by themselves. That's when God sent him to go put on the throne Saul. When Saul had become a king, he did not become obedient to God. He did not do the will of God. But he went against the will of God. Now there is the time when God asked him to go and attack the Malachites. Amen. And when Saul had been commanded that way, and he had been given a command to destroy all of them, such that he would destroy man and woman, such that he would destroy a baby that is still breastfeeding and those at birth, all those their livestock and cattle, such that he would not leave anything. Saul so went to fight the Malachites. When he reached there, he started looking at the nice ones. And when he saw the nice ones, he'll put them aside. And when he saw good sheep, he'll place them aside. Till when he reached the time of grabbing their king, and he said they don't deserve to die. 
and then he would take all those others that seem useless those people that seem vulnerable all those things that seem useless and there are the other things that he destroyed all that good livestock and all the others were left behind hallelujah amen and God in heaven knew what was happening. And then he sent Samuel. And then he said, I regret the fact that I put thought to the Lord. Because of disobedience sometimes, God's regret. In the book of Genesis, the, the word of God tells us that God regret the created man. In the times of Noah, people were walking against the world. People had become many in great numbers. And they started bringing up and they did against the will of God. Till the time God regretted And then God said he regrets the reason he put Saul to the throne. Hallelujah. Amen. There is nothing else other than disobedience of Saul. When Samuel reached Saul, Saul went ahead and said, I did what the Lord asked I did what he commanded me. I commanded me. I destroyed all the Malachites. And then Samuel said, He said and said, You say you distracted them. And there animals. So what about those sounds of animals, the lamb and the, and the cattle that I can listen to? Amen. Saul had nothing to say and he started trembling. And then he said all these that remain are those that we kept for a sacrifice to the Lord. Amen. But God spoke to him in this word. In 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22. Samuel replies to him and said. Then he said. Does God be happy of these other sacrifices other than you who sacrifice yourself to him. God does not become happy of a sacrifice that sacrifices another sacrifice other than he who becomes obedient to him. He says other than listening to the Lord it is ahead of sacrifices and humility it is above the fat of all those gods amen obedience to the Lord is the only thing that is needed the sacrifices to the Lord were not needed at the time. Only what God needed at the time was obedience. And the sacrifices that they had brought are not the ones that he was happy for. God becomes happy for the hearts that are humbled. Amen. There is one singer that sang and said, that if you had become happy of the sacrifice, that I would give them to you. But he said the sacrifice that God becomes happy for is a humbled heart. A humbled heart is the one that God rejoices. The heart that obeys is what God rejoices. And such hearts are not disobeyed by God. And God does not ignore God rejoices hearts of obedience. And God is closer to the people that listens to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Being obedient to God is a key. That opens the gate to our blessings. 
what happened to Saul is he was put off the throne. He was dethroned because of disobedience. There are very many kings that were put off the throne because of disobedience. Amen. Let's continue to listen to the word of God more. And let us continue to obey the word of God in this time. Such that we can continue to do the will of God. And we can continue to obey the rules of God. Amen. In the book of Job, the Bible tells us that. That when they listen to God and understand his rules, that they will spend their years in pleasantness. Amen. That they will spend their years in pleasantness. That they will spend their years in joy. But if they do not listen, that they will be destroyed by the sword. And they'll die because of ignorance. Amen. That those people who listen to, to God are those that live. People that are disobedient leave their years in curses. Amen. Do not see people just because they are rich and they live a nice life. But if they do not listen to, the, to God and their their days are numbered. People that are disobedient have less years. Even though they are lucky to live longer, all their years are full of curses. In, in Jeremiah, the word of God says, why are those who walk against the will of God made comfortable? He says they are fruitful and they get good fruits. But God answered them and said, even though they are lucky that way, I live far from their heart. Those who do not trust God and obey him, God lives far from their hearts. Amen. God lives closer to those who trust him. And God lives closer to the hearts of those who obey him. And in Isaiah, the word of God tells us that. That if you accept and listen. You shall eat of the good of the land. But if you deny and become disobedient. The sword shall eat. It That's the, word, the, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. This means that though disobedience made very many people lack good. The word of God tells us that if you accept and become obedient, you shall eat of the good fruits. Which means obedience only can make a person need. That's what the word of God tells us that if you become obedient, but if you refuse the short when the word of God says you shall be eaten by the sword in the word of God the sword signifies lessening of the days that's why we say those people that are disobedient have less days today. most of the times when the word of God says you shall be eaten by the sword that means you shall die unexpected because of disobedience and the days of those who are disobedient become less and less when we read the word of God in the the first years, people lived longer. 
Some would reach 969 years alive still breathing. Others would reach 700 years. Others 600. But because of disobedience and sin, the word of God tells us that no, the no, years no, will no, be no, lessened. Now people live up to like 700. They started to 900. Now we see someone who's 70 and we say, they have lived longer. That's how it is today. Someone lives up to 40 years and you can Others used to live up to 900. But now when you get to 70 or 80, when your kids and your grandchildren start praying, maybe he should die and go because he's too aged. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how it is today. The years of life went on becoming less because of the there was the release a time when only 50 will be enough. Amen. Disobedience is a very bad thing. Something that lessens your years. Isaiah says, if you accept and become obedient, you eat of the good of the land. But if you refuse and become disobedient, you shall be eaten by the sword. He says, this is the word of God that has, the mouth of the Lord that has spoken. Genesis Chapter 12. It tells us of the news of Abraham. God calls Abraham and asks him to leave his land. To leave his homeland. Leave all his family members. And leave his father's house. Praise God. I want us to listen to this. And these are the words that I'm going to end with. Hallelujah. Amen. God says to Abraham, He asked him to leave his homeland. That is the first thing he asked him to leave. And he asked him to leave his tribe mate. He asks him to leave his father's house. God asks him to leave behind three things. But now the word of God tells us that by faith Abraham obeyed God. When he asked him to move to where he was going to be shown, and he went not knowing where he was going. Amen. By faith, Abraham obeyed God. God asked him to leave his family members. He asked him to leave his nation. And he asked him to leave the house, his father's house. Abraham and Abraham obeyed. He did not stop his ears from listening to what God said. And when people disobeyed, it's not because they have not heard. Even though we disobey the word of God, it's not because we didn't hear of it. The word of God tells us that all was hard. That that's what the word of God is. That because it was all hard. That obey your, the Lord your God. Abraham obeyed God. That he called when he was to be to take him to the promised land. Amen. So when God asked him to leave his nation. But because of Abraham's obedience to God, there are up to seven things that God promised him. It is in the book of Genesis chapter 12. God says, if you become obedient, 
ukava mu gihugu cyanyu ukava mu bwoko bwanyu ukava no mu gasigana inzu yaso and leave your family members leave your nation and leave your father's house imana yamusezeranye ikintu cyambere yaramubwiye ngo zaguhindura ubwoko bukomeye god promised the first thing that he'll make him a great nation bwana sifiwe amen Utekereze kugira ngo wumvire Imana ni mari guhindura ubwoko bukomeye. Think about being obedient to God and he making you a great nation. Wo kumvira Imana yo guhindura ubwoko bukomeye. If you obey God he may turn you into a great nation. Irindi jambo rya kabiri. And the second thing. Yaramubwiye ngo nzaguha umugisha. He told him I will bless you. Kandi umugisha niyo twebwe twese tushaka. And that's what we are all looking for. Kandi umugisha w'Imana ukubiyemwe ibintu byose. And the blessing of God has many things combined in it. Bwana sifi. Amen. Hari wana batazabumvira Imana kugira ngo bashakishe imigisha and there are others who do not listen to God just to seek blessings. Ariko muri kwa gushakisha imigisha bakabibonamo imivumo. And in the quest to search blessings they find curses. Abandi benshi bari mureka bani mukureka gukorera Imana bareka kumvira Imana. Many others start stop, stop to work for God and do the will Muzu of God. bene data nta kindi kintu cyo duhesha umugisha. Kereze kumvira Imana. And to be honest there's nothing else that can give us. Nutumvira Imana, nutumvira ijwi ry'Imana, nutumvira ijambo ry'Imana. If you do not listen to the word of God and become obedient to the voice Uzari of God. Uzari kuramu mvumo. You will take a curse from it. Nta mugisha, nta mugisha uri ruhande rwo kutu rwo kutumvira Imana. There is no blessing beside obedience to God. Umugisha mukuru nuwo kumvira Imana. The greatest blessing is Niko Imana yasezeranije Abraham aramubwira ngo zaguha umugisha That's what God promised Abraham and said I will bless you Jambo rya gatatu yaramubwiye ngo nzogeza izina ryawe And the third thing is that he would make him popular Muruva kuko aya magambo yamusezeranije akomeye These are great words that he promised him Nanone ijambo rya kane Ijambo rigira kane And the fourth word Yaramubwiye ngo suko guha umugisha gusa He said it is not only giving you blessing. Ahubwo we ubwawe uzaba umugisha. By you yourself shall be a blessing. Hariho guhabwa umugisha no kuba umugisha. There is give, being given a blessing and you being Zaguha umugisha na ubwawe uzaba umugisha. I will give you a blessing and you yourself shall be the blessing. Niba twubashe Imana bene data Imana izaduhindura umugisha. If we become obedient to God he Imana izaduhimbigisha ngese duhindure numugisha. He will bless us and turn us into blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Irongerira mubwira ngo nzaha umugisha abazakwifuriza numugisha. And Moses he asked him that, he told he promised him that he will bless all those who bless him. Umuntu wese uzakwifuriza umugisha nawe uzaha umuha. All those who bless him shall be given the blessing in return. Iramubwira n'irindi rikomera mubwira ngo ndetse nabazakuvuma bona bo nzabavuma. And he told him something more important and said even those who curse you shall be cursed as well. Nukuvuga ngo iyo twumviye Imana. Which means when we are obedient to God. Ituvumira abatuvuma. He curses those who curses us. Irwanya abaturwanya. He fights those who fights us. Ihagurukira abaduhagurukira. He stands up for those who stand up against us. Bwana sifiwe. Amen. Hari wi migambi myinshi Imana yica kubera kugwa kuyumvira That God destroys because of your obedience. Bwana sifi. Amen. Murumva kuko kumvira Imana bene data kuri mwe bintu bikomeye. You understand that obedience to God has many things. Waremye kumvira Imana muri wowe. If you have obedience in you. Kwa kugeza ku bintu bikomeye. It can lead you to very many great things. Imana yaduha umugisha. God can bless us. Imana yaguhindura umugisha. God can turn you into a blessing. Imana yakuvumira bakuvuma. God can curse those who curse you. Nimba twumviye Imana. Only when we're obedient to God. Izo ndi bzafa kukuzaho gusa nimba utumviye. Those can't just come to you for no reason. yavuze ngo nimba utumviye abatumvira inkota izabarya. But the word of God tells us that if you become disobedient you shall be eaten by the sword. Bwana sifiwe. Amen. Ijambo rya nyuma and the last thing yaramubwiye ngo muri wowe ni himiryango yose yo mwisi izahererwa umugisha and he said through him all the other nations shall be blessed nubu tsatu yagusenga tuka ngo mana ya Ibrahim now we also go to pray and say god of Abraham kandi buri yusenga ngo mana ya Ibrahim mana Isaka na Yakob and when you pray and say god of Abraham Isaac and Jacob kuko imana yamusezeranije kuko muri Ibrahim ari mwo tuzohererwa imigisha only because god promised that through him is how we should you says your man man and his thing when you, when you pray to god that way god understands God, god gives you the blessings because he says through abraham he will when you are to pray say god of abraham isaac and jacob 
that's, uh, that's the same way Elijah prayed that God of Abraham is the grandfather of all Which means Abraham is the grandfather of all the believers. Through those blessings, that's how all the nations of the world shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God tells us that judgment shall come. And it will start in the house of believers. But if the judgment starts in the house of believers, so what shall be the ending of those who shall not listen to the good news? The end results of the people who are disrespectful how will the end result of the people who are disrespectful the word of God was uttered out and the songs were sung there is nothing that will be our excuse amen we shall not say we did not hear we've heard a lot maybe you shall say you were disobedient Amen. There are very many people that are obedient to God. And there are those who obey God in tough times. There are poor people that listen to God. And there are rich people that were obedient to God. And there are others we read of that were obedient to God. There are widows that were obedient to God. There is nothing that will be your excuse. And you will not give an excuse that you did not hear anything. But the greatest thing today is obedience. Let's be obedient to the word of God in this time. Be obedient obedient to the rules of God. The word of God tells us that when we eat, we shall eat the good fruits of the land. But if we refuse, if we refuse and become disobedient to the heart of God, there is a sword that is prepared for the, those people. There is anger for those people. Amen. Let's be righteous in this time. And be obedient to God. Amen. When we become obedient to our God in heaven, there are very many blessings that are upon us. And if we become disobedient to God, there are also curses. Amen. May the word of God be with us. But also let us walk in, in the will of God and let's train to be obedient to God. So that we can come ourselves under his hands. Such that God can lift us in his right hand in our times when we are obedient to him. The word of God tells us that destruction of our hearts starts by pride. But again, our hearts being risen up starts with humility. Every time when you come down and become humble, the end result is you being raised up. But again, when you are disrespectful, the end results become the vice versa. But let's be obedient to the God in and listen to obedience to the word of God, God. Such that we can listen to the word of God, we can understand the will of God. Amen. As we end in prayer, in the times of Lazarus, where he was, when he was being put in troubles, he asked that even if a drop of water can come to him. And he said, in between them, there is, a, there is a huge distance. And then he said, if that is not possible, is then there a way you can send a part of people who disagree such that they will not be put in this place that I am. Lazarus said to him in great words and said, if I do not obey the prophets, 
Let them go and be destroyed. Let's listen to the word of God and obey the servants of God. And obeying is not only obeying the word of God. Even the rules and guidelines that are ahead of us. Most of the times obedience is necessary. And obedience is a key important thing in our life. We've understood that there's a blessing for those ones. And there's also a curse for those ones. If we need blessings in our time, if we want to be raised up in our times, if we want to be righteous in our times, the key that we have learned today, let's learn to use the key of obedience. It's an open where we have not been because we are obedient to God. May the word of God be with us and may the word of God enable us to be obedient. To God in our times of life. Amen. Amen.